Ladies, have you ever been in the car with your man and you're cold? So you reach over and you turn the AC down just a couple of degrees. Wait three to five minutes and he's leaning over and turning it back up. Maybe you live with your man and you go to the thermostat and you want it up a couple degrees. Five seconds later, he gets up to go to the washroom and he turns it down a couple of degrees. Have you ever wondered why, in general, men seem to like it colder and women like it hotter? It's a swamp in my underwear right now. In 2012, in a review of scientific literature by Sammy Karjalanen, 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 Kim Basinger, Basinger, Basinger. <laughs> anyways, this Sammy guy did a review of literature and he found that men expend a lot more calories than women. In fact, 23% more calories, and that's essentially like burning fuel. So if you think of it like a furnace, our bodies are both furnaces, but we run a lot hotter. Now a lot of that has to do with muscles. Men have a lot more muscle mass and a lot more dense muscle mass. Since about one third of the body's heat is generated from muscle tissue, then it adds up that with all that dense muscle mass, guys are generating way more heat. And what muscle also provides is more of a stronger metabolism, which also burns through food and provides a lot more heat and insulation inside the body. It's obvious that women also have more hormonal fluctuations. They have fluctuations based on their menstrual cycle or smoking or exercise or circadian rhythms. All of these fluctuations have been linked to gender-based variations in temperature and temperature perception. The basal body or the resting temperature of women fluctuates during their menstrual cycle. Women are also more prone to hypothyroidism, an underactive thyroid, and a symptom of this is getting cold or feeling chilly all the time. Even in menopause, where we think that women have these hot flashes, when that happens, they actually get a chill because the body is trying to regulate its internal temperature. Men also, if you haven't noticed, have thicker, hairier, oilier skin than women. So that's a top layer of insulation right away. Also, blood vessels. Men's blood vessels are actually closer to the skin than women's are. So again, that layer of insulation is very close to the surface, but also getting inside the blood vessels, women's blood vessels are actually much narrower, so they give off less heat. So on a more scientific level, women's blood cells suck. <laughs> I think they're amazing. You go blood vessels, I got you. We get it, there's a lot of biological factors, muscle and hormones and skin and blood vessels. There's another theory though that maybe we just think we're colder. You see, when there is an extreme temperature change coming from the outside, what happens in females is all the blood rushes to the inside to keep their internal reproductive organs hot. This leaves their extremities quite cold. Men, on the other hand, need their reproductive organs cool. Keep those balls cool. These so, ones. Those ones. These balls. Keep those balls Not cool, cool right now. <laughs> Not cool. So when there's an external change in temperature, for women, that blood rushes internal, but for the men, it rushes externally to the extremities to keep those warm. This also explains why women are prone to more cold-related conditions like the shivers or frostbite or hypothermia. In 1998, researchers at the University of Utah observed that women tend to possess higher core temperatures than men, 97.8 degrees Fahrenheit versus 97.4. While female core temperatures were higher, their hands were consistently colder, a lot colder. While men registered an average hand temperature of 90 degrees Fahrenheit, the mean hand temperature for women was just 87.2. This is fascinating to me. They're implying that because all of our heat rushes in while men's rushes out, that leaves our skin and our hands cold all the time. Don't even pretend, ladies, your hands aren't cold all the time. But what this means is you're not actually colder, you just think you're colder. Does this take us back to the bitches be cray theory? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. I don't care. Guys don't care if women are cold. We understand people are going to get cold. It's the whining about the cold that's the problem. There's this great bit by comedian Louis C.K. where he talks about how people use the word starving, like privileged white people in North America, like, I'm starving. I'm starving, my tummy. You're not starving. Don't say that in the Central African Republic ever because you're not starving. Just like when girls are like, oh my God, I'm freezing. It's, I'm, free I'm freezing. I'm freezing. No, if you're saying you're freezing, 
you'd better be like pneumonia slash a scientist is gonna find your body in a glacier in 10,000 years, super cold, if you're gonna talk about it. Otherwise, just put on the coat, hug yourself, ask me to hug you, something, but just don't complain about it. Sure guys, you can try it Ben's way, or you can be a chivalrous gentleman. Ask your lady if she's cold, ask her if she would like it a degree higher, offer her a blanket, offer her your jacket, or just put your arms around her. But why would I use a jacket when there's so much room in my pants? That'd be weird. What? Like, oh I'm cold. <laughs> <laughs> weird for who? Uh <laughs> Yeah, actually that would be, this would be the episode for me to like slowly have no clothes on. I'm so strong though. So what happens with men is there, <laughs> it goes to the outside. I lost my whole flow because we said balls too many times. <laughs>